Yo, what is up, my Nakama? So my name is Daniel, and I'm a current first year medical student. Wait, no, I just finished first year, so I guess technically I'm a second year medical student. Okay, redo intro. Yo, what is up, my Nakama? So my name is Daniel, and I'm a current second year medical student. And in this video, I'm gonna be watching episode three of Cells at Work. And if you haven't watched episode two or episode one, I'll probably put it somewhere up here. So you can click that link and watch that episode before you watch this one. Um, so without further ado, let's get into episode three, which I think was titled Influenza. So we're probably going to learn a little bit about viruses. Let's go. What is this? Oh, it's a naive T cell. <laughs> it's an immature T cell. So I guess it, it hasn't been sensitized to like to an antigen yet. I wonder if it's in the lymphatics. <laughs> oh no. Why don't so? To the rescue. He did his transmigration. おい。大丈夫か。僕は <laughs> That's right. They can still be pretty powerful though. They just don't have like antigen specificity. Well, this is fantastic. This page pretty much just explains um, a lot of uh, common things about the influenza virus. Uh, if you didn't know, the influenza virus is a type of orthomyxovirus, which is a negative sense RNA virus. <laughs> Thank you, Sketchy Medical, for ingraining that into my memory. Um, and uh, it's important to like get the flu shot um, for influenza because it can protect against certain um, serotypes. Um, so there's two proteins, I believe it's hemagglutin and neuraminidase. And basically, there's variations of those two proteins that the flu shot tries to predict. Um, so it's always important to get your flu shot. Um, and there's also the three main categories, A, B, and C. I believe A and B are fairly common, and C is kind of like a rare type of influenza. Um, and I'm not sure if the influenza shot is supposed to cover all three. Uh, I kind of forgot, but anyways, let's continue. <laughs> a -gata, B -gata. Yo! <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> What an awesome little macro page. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, actually a difference between like the neutrophil, the white blood cell and this macrophage is that when you notice the neutrophil, like it's when it kills like germs and different viruses, it just kills them and doesn't do anything afterwards. But macrophages are important because they're known as APCs, which stands for antigen presenting cells. So once they like eat or kill a bacteria or like a virus in this case, they will then like sample a little portion of that virus and then they can present it to a T cell, for example, so that then it can um, mature and recognize the virus so that um, when there's another infection of the same virus later on, your immune system is like really well suited to like, actually fight the virus. Um, so right now what it's doing is it took a little piece um, of that virus that it just killed and I guess it knew that it was a, um, a type B influenza antigen. So it's probably going to present this maybe to that naive T cell. Um, that's a little bit of a crybaby right now. <laughs> oh, nice. So dendritic cells are, uh, are also super important. They're kind of like the, the main um, antigen presenting cells. And actually dendritic cells are kind of like, I like to think of them as the bridge between your innate immune system and your adaptive immune system. So like when you get a cut or if a virus or a germ enters your body, a dendritic cell will like sample that antigen and then it will begin the adaptive immune process by 
presenting it like to the killer T cells so that then the killer T cells can aggregate to the source of the infection um, or the pathogen and then like kill them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jotaro again. Oga, Oga. So I think what's happening now is that the influenza virus that's in this host body, it might be in something known as like the incubation stage, which is kind of like when the virus replicates and starts to proliferate more. And generally you're like asymptomatic. So different pathogens and different viruses have different durations of incubation periods. Um, so influenza, for example, I, I kind of forgot what it was, but let's say that like for seven days, once you actually are initially exposed to the virus, you could be asymptomatic as the virus replicates in your body. And only once it reaches a certain threshold of amount of like viral pathogen within your system, do you actually start to display um, symptoms like fever, cough, um, anything of that sort. Um, and this guy's awesome. He's a memory T cell. So memory T cells are super important. They're basically like the immunological memory of your body and they will recognize like an antigen or a pathogen um, that you've been exposed to previously um, if it's been sensitized to that pathogen. And then it can initiate a super fast um, immune response. And in some cases, you might not even know that you were infected with a virus because that's how fast your immune um, system would clear out that pathogen. Uh, so memory T cells, they're, they're super key and super important. And it looks like he's reading his uh, book of memories. <laughs> Although I thought that only one memory T cell will, rec will recognize one pathogen. So whatever this book is, it te technically should only be for influenza B if he's a memory T cell for that specific virus. I believe that's true. I'm not sure though. I'm just a first year medical student. I'm still learning. <laughs> ほら、これ見てごらん。こ、これは先輩たちの昔の写真。This <laughs> なんだか増加させてきた。おっ、you gotta mature. You gotta become a real T cell. My job is to murder pathogens. Whoa, it's just gonna mature like this? Wait a second. I thought the dendritic cell like has to actually present an antigen for the T cell to mature. He's just doing this out of nowhere. I think. Whatever. I'll take it. <laughs> as long as I get to see this kid throw some hands, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> oh. It's releasing viral progeny. No, it's infecting more, more of the host cells. That's very sad. That's actually what happens. So like, when viruses infect host cells, your body will destroy itself. Well, it'll destroy the viral cells that were infected. And what happens when your immune system um, attacks your own cells, like that are not 
uh, virally infected, that's called autoimmune destruction. Um, and there's like a ton of different autoimmune diseases, um, like diabetes type one is um, an autoimmune destruction of uh, certain pancreatic cells. Um, so it's good that your body will attack itself when it's killing um, cells that were virally infected, but you don't want to go too overboard and start attacking cells that are healthy, of course. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Okay, also this giant like machete meat cleaver thing that the macrophage is wielding um, is pretty dope. <laughs> Influenza virus is Influenza virus is Exponential proliferation. Oh, so it looks like um, a fever is happening now. And a fever is like one of the main ways that your body will combat like a virus or just um, any sort of illness. Um, and a lot of people like associate having a fever as like being something bad, but it's actually a sign that your body is trying to fight off an infection. Um, and I know there's like some debate about whether or not you should treat a fever in the first place. But obviously, like if your internal body temperature rises too high, you do want to treat that fever because otherwise, like you'll have dehydration and potentially seizures from having a too high of a fever. But generally, like if you have like a small fever, um, because you've been infected like with influenza or some other pathogen, um, that's pretty good because um, I mean, there's some debate about like what's actually happening in your body when you do have a fever. Um, it might make it harder for like the virus to replicate um, and it might um, help induce a better immune response um, to help combat the virus. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Uh, the show, most likely the show will probably explain what a fever is. <laughs> um, I always jump the gun. <laughs> Is that the naive T cell? And now matured. His <laughs> voice is so deep. <laughs> Oh my god. I want to graduate medical school like this. <laughs> it looks like he's straight from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. B cell! Oh wow. Oh, so that's who they were in the intro. I remember I, I saw these people like shooting things and I didn't exactly see, but I guess he was shooting antibodies. Um, so T cells and B cells, like they're part of your adaptive immune system. And yeah, as they say here, it's a type of lymphocyte that fights antigens such as bacteria and viruses by producing weapons called antibodies. Um, and antibodies um, can like target different bacteria for uh, macrophages to eat. Um, they can also actually just like, <clears throat> actually like opsonize and um, prevent the pathogen from like replicating itself like there's multiple ways that antibodies are effective in your immune response um i actually didn't know who this guy was but it makes sense he has a little bee on his arm and he shoots antigens like that um uh but yeah pretty cool <laughs> let's go <laughs> oh, there's a lot happening right now. It's a combo attack here in native immune system, your adaptive immune system. Sneezing. Yay! Dead. <laughs> this was an all out war, a seven day war. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what his little hair thing looks like? It looks like that um, when Gon and Pito fight in Hunter x Hunter and it, and his hair is all like crazy up in the sky. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Little weeb moment. Let's continue. <laughs> 
It's interesting, like, as you can see, like, they're, they're in, like, sort of a crater damaged area. And when your body is, like, fighting off an infection, there's obviously going to be a lot of side effects. And you're not going to be, like, completely unscathed. Well, it depends on how fast your immune system responds to the infection. But, like, if you have a ton of symptoms, there could even be, like, post-viral or post-bacterial complications. Um, like, for example, with um, strep pyogenes, like, you can have post glomerular nephritis or you can have rheumatic fever like a few weeks after you've had the infection and i think like that this kind of war zone area depicts like that the body was definitely stressed uh fighting off this infection hey, oh hey, no hey, <laughs> or it mutated oh no i feel like i feel like it mutated or maybe it's a different type of influenza <laughs> uh, still cry baby at heart oh antibody's not working either yeah it must be a, a different type of influenza oh yeah type a wait i forgot um well i wonder i thought type a and type b were like similarly prevalent but maybe i'm getting confused um i wonder what the like the swine flu pandemic um in like the early 1900s i wonder if that was a type a version of influenza no not the swine flu i believe it was the spanish flu um the swine flu was like uh, a few years ago i believe it was like a h1n1 um version of influenza <laughs> what okay i'm just gonna assume that that dendritic cell called uh memory t cells or t cells that were ready to fight influenza type a unless this is like a two-part episode uh but i'm not exactly sure uh but overall i really enjoyed this episode actually um, it had like a ton of awesome information about viruses and their spread and how your body handles it. Um, and actually, I, I think it's kind of important um, in light of our current situation, um, just to be you know, a little educated about viruses and uh, different viral spread. And of course, not all viruses spread in the same manner or are as virulent as others. Um, some viruses, of course, cause a lot worse and, and severe symptoms compared to others. Um, but it's always good to, you know, educate yourself and be informed, even if like you're not in the medical community. And also, uh, uh, before I end this video, I just, of course, want to give a huge shout out um, to all the healthcare workers that are continuously um, working on the front lines, um, saving patients and, and making tough decisions on a day to day basis. Um, I'm just making these videos um, for people who are at home um, just to provide them um, some source of fun and entertainment that is somewhat medically related. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed Cells at Work episode three and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and as always, Dr. Bayo.